This morning, we'll be rounding up the teaching series that we started about five Sundays ago. God has guided us and directed us in this month with a prophetic direction which says, my hands are made stronger by diligence. Tell your neighbor, my hands are made stronger by diligence. If that neighbor didn't say it well, turn to another neighbor and say it better. My hands are made stronger by diligence. And in our Sunday series, we've been looking at the blessedness of a diligent hand. Let's say it together. The blessedness of a diligent hand. And this morning, we'll be looking at part five of it. The foundation scripture is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, 6 says, let's read it together. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Underline that word, diligently seeking God. And basically, that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. How do I elevate my diligence in search of my Father? Because reward does not go to everyone who seeks him. It goes to those who do what? Diligently seek him. So we're going to be looking at how to diligently seek the Lord this morning. Now, the Greek word behind that diligently seeking says it means to search out, to investigate, to crave, to demand. As a matter of fact, to worship what you are looking for. To worship and to seek after carefully. Now, if you put that definition together, Diligence at the peak of diligence, what you find is a display of passion. When someone is diligently seeking a thing, what do you find? You find passion. You find zeal. You find an aggression. You find a no giving up mentality. Someone who says, you know what? I'm in search of this thing, and until I find it, I give myself no rest. Just like the scripture describes a woman who lost a pearl. And what did she do? The Bible says she put on the light. She searched everywhere. She turned the carpet up. She turned the chairs up. Now, you know when you're looking for something sometimes. There was a time a man was looking for his car. And he went to look in the gutter. <laughs> you know, that's desperation. My goodness, I just parked this car here. And what has happened? He looked, in fact, for such a person, he may even be looking under the chair to see if the car was there. Praise God. So it is that sense of searching both uh, places where you think it will be found and places where it may be. Just by chance, I, I could just find it here. So you leave no stone unturned in the search for God. And that's what Hebrews eleven six is talking about. It says, he is a rewarder of those. 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 No one else. Those who diligently seek him. Now, Diligent search also, I find, could be linked to uh, doggedness. Doggedness. Now, um, why do they use the... I, I looked at the history of the word dogged. And they found that one animal that has an attribute to look for a thing and look for it and look for it and never give up is a dog. So that's why they came up with that word to say that someone is dogged. An adjective that says someone is dogged. What it means is this person is following after, is trailing, is searching everywhere, is looking everywhere. And 
until it is found. It's either it's, either it's found or something else. Praise God. Now, and that is similar to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. He said, and from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent takes it by force. Now, if you will take a thing by force and you are violent, what does it mean? It means you leave nothing unturned. You go to the right, you go to the left, you go everywhere, and anyone and anything standing your way, you are ready to take them out of the way so that you can achieve your objective. That is the kind of mindset, mindset that God wants you and I to have in our search and quest for him. Praise the Lord. Now, please understand, when men are going to give reward, they give it based on the display of passion, goal set and achieved, special things done, or, you know, just over and above average kind of delivery. That's who is rewarded. Everyone, for instance, in the place of work, we get a normal salary. But when they identify someone who has, who has gone over and beyond, they say, this guy has done what? He's gone over and beyond. And so what do they do? They provide a reward. So men reward, uh, men give their reward based on a display of passion, of doggedness, of tenacity, and results achievement. And I saw a woman in scripture who had that kind of search and quest and pressing until her goal was achieved. The Bible called her the Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 to 28. I want us to read it. And it says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thy, thou son of David, my daughter, is grievously vexed with the devil. And, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Verse 27. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Praise God. Now, let's analyze the scripture. Here was Jesus, the Savior of the world. She has heard so many wonderful things about the Savior. But I think, in my own mind, what happened while I was thinking about our scripture, it was not that Jesus could not attend to her, but it's like a test of faith for her. The first thing that happened, after she elevated her issue to Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is what many have cried and have received mercy. And so Jesus did not answer her a word. What did Jesus do? He did not answer her a word. What was worse? The disciples came and said, woman, shut up. You can see the Savior is not even talking to you. Get out of the way. Get out of here. And what was worse? Jesus said to her, look, I have not come for you at this time. I have come to, it says, then verse 26, and he answered, it is not meat to take the children's bread before then, verse 24. And he answered, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So my mission, first and foremost, is to Israelites. You are a Canaanite woman. You don't belong here. So, you know what? Just give me time. I will get to your case later on. But this woman was in a diligent search. A diligent search. Now, most of us, at that first instance, when Jesus did not even answer us, so look at this man, he's proud. And walk away. 
I know, I know some people will have done that. What is even worse? The disciples say, get out. You see, he's not talking. Get out. Many will have said, come and see what's going on. The savior of the world and will have felt embarrassed and would have, you know, have been aggravated. And so many are so sensitive in church today. Pastor, ah, please, I want you to pray with me. And I, in fact, if you refuse to look in their direction, he said, but I, told, I told Pastor, I told Pastor to, to, to pray for me. He didn't even look at me. What is was That usher told me, get out. Pastor is not looking for you. And what will have happened? Many will have been angry. But listen, at the point of your breakthrough, you will go through issues that look as if they have come to embarrass you. But you need to press by faith and search and press in. That's what Jesus said. He said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence takes it by force. Are you in search of God? Hold on. Press on. Listen. I have said this often at times. The pressure is biggest at the point of your breakthrough. Every time there is a pressure on your life, there is a big breakthrough that is on the way to you. So you need to keep it together. You need to keep yourself composed. You need to allow the spirit of the Lord to speak to you. That's what it takes for a diligent search. This woman could ordinarily have taken an offense. This woman could ordinarily have walked away. How can I come to Jesus and say, have mercy on me? And he didn't even look at me. And the disciples came and told me, Master is not talking to you, get away. And even Jesus himself said, I've not been sent to you. I've been sent to another set of people. Many in church will have taken offense. I decree, whatever makes people including yourself and myself. Take offense easily. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Offenses are part of life. But it is your reaction that determines the outcome. This woman, because she was in a diligent, diligent search, and what's going on with my mouth this morning? Because she was in a diligent pursuit and search for the master, she stood her ground. What did she do? See what she said. See how she reacted. He said, I'm not saint. The Bible says in verse 25, then she came and worshipped and said, Lord, help me. I know you are the savior of the world. I know you can help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. That provoked the mercy of the Lord over her. Look at verse 26. But he answered. Jesus said, it is not meat to take the bread of children and cast it to dogs. Many will say, you call me dog, Jesus. You call me a dog? Ha. You, you know what that means? That is, be ready for a fight. But here is what she said. Master, I know it is true. Even the dogs will eat from the crumbs that fall from the table. You need to do more than you are doing now. You see, many, many have been turned back at the point of their breakthrough because of an attitude. Easily. They take offense. Uptight. No. That man said that to me in that church. He called me a dog. Hmm. It, first, I want to remove his two front teeth. First, if I couldn't do that, that church, I'm not going there again. Ah, Your place of blessing. Your place of blessing. If she had that attitude, the daughter would have died. She would have lost out. But you see, her name came in scripture because there was something notable recorded about her reaction to things. Look, things will happen 
control your reaction to them. You can't stop life from happening. You can't stop offenses from company coming, but you can take a control of your spirit. The Bible says, he that has the control of a spirit is bigger, is greater than one that conquers a city. In other words, when you can take charge of your spirit, man, when you can comport yourself, when you can react properly to the issues of your life, your breakthrough is inside. I speak to someone here at the verge of your breakthrough. Whatever trial will come your way, you will overcome. Yes. Brethren, listen, at the trial of, at the point of every breakthrough, trials come. At the point of every breakthrough, trial comes. Say that to your neighbor. At the point of every breakthrough, there is a trial. So, come Put yourself. Put yourself together. Stand on the word of God. I've often told us, when is an aircraft pressured the most? When it's about to take off. All the engines are powered on and you hear the loudest noise. And why? It's about to take off. That's what happens most of the time when your breakthrough is about to come. There is so much pressure, pressure, and pressure. Check it out. You're waiting for someone at a bus stop. You both agreed. Let's meet at McKnight train station. What time? 10 a.m. When it's about 10 a.m., there is an agitation in the inside of you. This person will soon be here. He will soon be here. And 10, you know, 10 a.m., he's not there. So you begin to wonder, what's going on? Okay, I think I have to leave now. Maybe I need to go do something else. 10.03, he's still not there. As soon as you left, he came. Has it happened to you before? That's what happens to most people in church. At the point of their breakthrough, they have been waiting. They have been praying. They have been saying, Lord, thank you for this breakthrough. Thank you for this breakthrough. And on the day that the angel was coming with the blessing and and usher, our ushers are very wonderful ushers. Or somebody stood and said, Madam, why is your dress like this? Oh my God, is that what you guys do in this church? No way, I'm going away. And you know, and they walked away, the angel came in with a blessing. On the day of your visitation, you will not miss it. Yeah. I pray for someone again. On the day of your visitation, you shall not miss it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this woman elevated her search. And what happened? After all the dialogue, she said to the master, in fact, she debased herself the more. The master said, I'm not sent to you. I'm sent to the house of Israel. It is not me to take the children's food and give it to dogs. You know what she did? She debased herself the more. She humbled herself the more. He said, master, even the dogs will eat from the crumbs. That is, I'm ready to eat from the crumb today. But you must do this thing today. That's what it, take for a, it takes for a diligent search. She debased herself the more. Rather than take offense, she humbled herself. She worshipped Jesus. She debased herself before. A diligent search will require more than what you're doing now. A diligent search will do what? Will require more than what you are doing. You must be ready to stick it through offenses. You must be ready to stick it through those trials that will come and look at you eyeballs to eyeball. And as if, you know, this trial just wants to finish you. At such times, be sensitive in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to show us one more example of a lady called Ruth. I said here, diligence in seeking God, Ruth's approach. Now, please understand that God desires your closeness to him. God desires what? You being close and connected to him. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. The Bible says, And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with some of your heart. All of your heart. In other words, you must leave no stone unturned. You must 
turn everywhere. You must look everywhere in your diligent search for God. A diligent search, I found out, is rooted in your love for God, which will be put to test. Remember that the law and commandments is summarized in your love for God and humanity. When the young ruler came and said, Master, what must I do? He said, look, there are two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. So you must pass the love test. Tell your neighbor you must pass the love test. In your search for God, in those things that trials that will come your way, the love test, you must pass it. Do you really love God? He says, I'm going to try it. Say, everything you declare, everything you say will be tested. And you must pass the test. What happens? You must pass the test. Now, in Matthew chapter 20, 22, 35 to 40, it was the conversation that took place between the young ruler and the Savior. He was a lawyer. He said, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a, tempting, a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The love test. The love test. Praise God. Now, the story of Ruth uh, is something that there's so much there's so much to say about it. But I just want to bring out a few of the points that showed the times when she pressed and went in her further search for God. Now, she had a mother-in-law called Naomi. Naomi had Ruth and Orpah as both daughters-in-law. And when her husband died and the two sons, you know, she called them together and said, uh, you know, ladies, uh, it's time to go back to your, your places. At this point, Naomi was living in, in, in Moab. In Moab. She was living in Moab. And these two daughters were both Moabites. So she thought to herself, now if I, if, I, if I give birth to a son, you can't even wait for that son to grow up old. I mean, it looks like there's, no more, there's nothing more I can do at this point. So girls, please go back to your parents' houses. Now, <laughs> and what I found in analyzing the scripture... Opa and Ruth are typical of today's believers. Opa and Ruth are what? Typical of the believers today. So Naomi pleaded with both of them and said, please go back to your parents' house. Because looking at it, you know, it's, there seems to be no, 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 nothing I can do. I, I don't have sons to give to you. So go back. So, politically, it was correct. But spiritually, something was saying there is more to life than this. Ruth, with the eyes of faith, saw beyond the hopelessness that was at hand. With the eyes of faith, she looked beyond what was going. Look at what she said. After the plea, Naomi's plea, and see how, you know, Ruth reacted. Ruth chapter 1 verse 12. It said, turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I'm too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, and I should have a husband also tonight, and should bear sons tonight, will you tarry till they are grown? Will you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieved me much for your sake. And that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. Verse 14. And they lifted up their voice and wept. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. It was politically correct, but spiritually wrong. Say, all political rightness does not work out the righteousness of God. 
the situation may look, oh yeah, I mean, this is the correct thing to do. I mean, no more husband, nothing, no hope, let's all go back. But you see, whatever situation you are in, don't look at it with the eyes in the natural. Look in the spirit because there is a message behind what you're seeing. There is a fine line that you need to be able to read and understand. There, there is something that you need to know about what is happening to you right now. Don't look at it with the natural eyes. Someone got a job. This one is paying better. This one is paying less. Naturally speaking, which one would you take? The one that is paying better. But it may be politically right, but spiritually wrong. And that's the point where we are right now. Ruth saw beyond the situation. Ruth, against hope, believed in hope. The principle of faith. Against hope, believe what? In hope that there must be a way out of it for me. What you are going through right now is not the end. Say to your neighbor, that's not the end. Tell another person, that's not the end of you. Say, behind the veil. Something great is waiting for you. And that's the word of the Lord to someone here this morning. In the name of Jesus. So, Ruth held on. Why? She was looking for something beyond the natural. She was looking with the eye of faith into the supernatural. There is something out here for me. It is not ordinary for these things to happen. There must be a way out for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. He said, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. Most of the time, we, we, we make special what God calls common. We think it's only for me. And I imagine what Opa was thinking. Yeah, this woman is right. You can't have children today. But you see, you know, big, big grammar. We'll speak a big grammar. Life is not about grammar. It's about spirituality. It's about looking with the eye of faith. It's about going deep and understanding. Let the deep call to the deep. So in every situation of life that you face, look beyond the ordinary. Look beyond the ordinary. Look with the eyes of faith. Because everything that will become possible is first impossible. But with the eyes of faith, the Bible says, with God, nothing shall be impossible to him that what? Believe it. Praise God. That was Ruth's situation here. So she claved on. Now, something else happened. Naomi insisted in Ruth 1, 16 to 18. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For whither you go, I will go. Whither you lodge, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so, she swore. The Lord do so to me and more. If aught but death part thee and me. And verse 18. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. When that situation insists, you persist. That's what happened. Naomi was insisting. Ruth was persisting. Say, I know what I'm looking for. Please never follow the natural course. Do not follow the natural course. Tell your neighbor, do not follow the natural course. Don't look with the eyes of the natural. Look with the eyes of faith. Look into the supernatural and say, Lord, I know this situation is not meant to kill me. I know I can see you behind this. I know this is working together for my good. That was what Ruth was telling her. And what did Ruth do? One thing I also saw after Upper left, Ruth, Naomi picked Ruth. They went back to Israel. And the Bible, you know, I saw. She humbled herself. She stayed with her mother-in-law. She was submissive and obedient to her. Girls of today, how do we treat our mother-in-laws? 
that woman I don't even I don't I really, I really don't know. No. No. It's a digression, but I don't know. I know I think the spirit of the Lord is speaking to someone here. In Ruth chapter 3, verse 3 to 6, Ruth Naomi told her, He said, Ruth, wash yourself, anoint yourself, put raiment on thee, go down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man until he has done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lie down that you shall mark the place where he shall lie. And you go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, and she said unto her, all that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And she went down onto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. You don't have a monster-in-law, you have a mother-in-law. It doesn't matter what the situation is. The God of heaven can make that situation and turn it out in your favor. And I pray for someone here today, there is an insight for you. Whatever you have done to your mother-in-law, I don't know, I didn't predicate this, I didn't plan this, but the Holy Spirit is speaking through me right now to somebody. Whatever you have done to your mother-in-law, after this service, go and make a reconciliation. Go and reconcile to her, hold her close to yourself, buy her uh, good gifts and speak well and speak good words to her. And that situation is turning around in your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, after Ruth persisted, what was the result? Number one, God gave her divine favor. She met with Boaz. She obtained God's favor, Ruth chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Number two, there was a divine connection from heaven that connected Ruth and Boaz. And Boaz married Ruth. In Ruth chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, Boaz took root, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord, the Lord, capital Lord, is that in the scripture? The capital word, Lord, gave her conception, and she bore a son. That was the only child. But do you know, that child put Ruth, a Moabites, and took her from a strange land, and put her in the lineage of Jesus. And I was reading in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. And I was wondering why would they analyze the scripture like this. It said, and Salmon begat Booz of Rechab. Ordinarily, in the listing is the names of the men. But because something supernatural happened about Ruth, they had to make a mention of her name. Now I said... And Salmon began Booz of Rechab. And Booz began Obed of Ruth. And Obed began Jesse. And if you go down, down, down the line, that was how our Savior was born. What is happening to you right now is turning out in your favor. Amen. It is supernatural. Don't look at it as something natural. In your search for God... Go beyond the natural. Step into the realm of the supernatural. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there is no situation that has come to you which is not common to man. But God is faithful. In that situation, he will make a way of escape. So he will reduce the tension around you and he will give you the grace to go through it. There is someone here. The next time you are tried, the hand of the Lord will rest upon you. It will take you through it. In the name of Jesus. In your search for God, there will be obstacles. Identify them. Be sensitive in the spirit. Know that this obstacle uh, meant to what? To dissuade you and turn you away from the Lord. But as the situation insists, you persist. Shall we rise up this morning?